Hey guys, welcome to Matt's Hub. In today's video, we're looking at how I designed and sliced this gyroid vase. In order to make a part like this, which has two different settings applied to different segments of it, you actually need to export two different STL files from your design software. Then I'm going to show you how to bring it into the slicing software and apply those different settings to the different parts. Now interestingly, this is actually the same technique that you use to create a multi-colour parts, so you just apply different extruders to the different parts, but in this case we'll be doing something a bit different. Um, the first step is to design it, and I'm going to be using Fusion 360, so I'm going to show you how to do that now. So here we are in Fusion 360 with a new design. And the first step is going to be to create the vase body, and then we can divide it into the rib sections and the infill segments. So first things first, we're going to be working off a reference image for the shape of the vase. But before I bring that in, I'm just going to create a sketch on the side plane here and draw a line that's 15 centimeters tall, which is about the height that I want my vase to be. So I'll draw that and just click Stop Sketch. And now I can head over to Google Images and I've just searched Vars and found one that I like the shape of. So I'm going to save that to my desktop. And now back in Fusion 360, I can insert that by clicking Insert Attached Canvas. Click that side plane again and then click Select Image, bring that one in. And I can scale and position that however I want. So I'm just going to bring the size up a bit. Move it around. Try negative five. There we go. And move it to the left a bit. That's looking good to me. So click OK. And there it is. So now we can create another sketch and just trace the profile of the vase. So I'll click Create Sketch on this side plane again and just start drawing the lines. So hit L to bring up the line tool, start drawing them out, and click the green tick when you're done. And I can use a spline to follow this contour of the outside. So click Sketch Spline, and click on the first point, and then just click a few points around the edge. And it will nicely follow that curve, just like that. And when I'm done, I'll just click the green tick, just like that. And I'm going to do one more spline just for this curved section here. So click spline again, that point, one in there, and let's say one there. OK. Hit L for the last connecting line like that. And there we go. That's all done. Um, I'm actually going to fill it this curve a little bit as well, just to make that a bit rounder. So click sketch fill it and click that corner. Let's say 8mm, that looks good. So now we can turn that into a body by going Create, Revolve. And click on the face, click Axis, and click this vertical line that we drew. And if we turn that around, you can see that's made a 3D body. So click OK. And we can hide that canvas now, just like that. And I'm actually going to hide that sketch too. And there we go, there's our body. So obviously we don't want the vase to be solid, um, so we're going to have to use a tool called Shell, which will make it hollow with one face as the opening. So click Modify and Shell, and just click this top face here. And let's say I want the walls to be 4mm thick. It shows it out for us just like that. And the bottom's still solid, that's got 4mm of uh, bottom there. That's looking good, so I'll click OK. Now I'm just going to round this edge here, so click F for fillet, click that edge, let's try 2 millimeters, maybe 1.5. That looks good, so hit OK. So before we start doing uh, the vertical ribs, I'm actually just going to separate off 4 millimeters off the top and 4 millimeters off the bottom, because I want that to stay solid as well. So to do that, I'm going to create a plane. So click Offset Plane, click this flat surface here, 
and I'll type in negative four millimeters so that will lower it down a bit. Okay, and then I'll just do uh, the plane for the bottom as well while I'm at it. Click offset plane again, click this bottom face and negative four again. And you can see that moves it up by four millimeters. Click OK. All right, and now I need to split the body. So click Modify, Split Body, select the vase, click Splitting Tool, and then select that plane. Just like that. Click OK. And do the same thing for the second one. Split Body, select that, click Splitting Tool, and click our plane. Just make sure that's the right one. Yep. Click OK. There we go. So now if we expand the bodies here, we can see we've got three. The middle one, then there's the top and the bottom. So I'm going to hide the top and bottom right now. Whoop. Just like that. And I can hide these planes as well. Alright, so now I'm actually going to duplicate this part because we want um, one of them to just be the ribs and one of them to be just the other segments. So I'll click on the body, Command C, Command V, just copy paste, click OK, and now we've got a duplicate just like that. So I'm going to hide one of them and just work on the other. So to make these ribs, I'm actually going to draw a sketch on the bottom here with a number of lines cutting through, and then I can extrude that up and set the mode to intersect, and we just get these curved ribs. So I'll show you how to do that. Click Create Sketch, and I'll make it on this bottom plane, just like that. And I want these ribs to be four millimeters wide, so I'm going to draw a line up all the way to the outside, and then two millimeters to the right, and two millimeters to the left. There we go, and draw it down to the other end. Whoops. Four millimeters across, and all the way back. All right. And I'm just going to set this line in the middle to a construction line by clicking X, just so it doesn't interfere with anything. So now I want to create a number of these lines cutting through, and I can do that by clicking Sketch Circular Pattern. And click on all these lines that we've just drawn. There's five. There we go. And select the center point as being this center here. And you can see it's already set it to three, but we want um, 10 ribs all the way around. So that would be five copies, just like that. Click OK, and there we go. But there's just one problem with this, and that's it. They're all separate. You can see when I hover over them, they're separated by these lines in the middle. So to get rid of that, we can hit T for the trim tool and just trim off all these lines that are separating them. Just clicking all the way around. Get rid of those two. And then hit escape and using the window selection tool I can just select these remainders on the inside and hit delete. There we go. So now you can see when I hover, at it, hover over it, it selects that whole area. And I can hit E for extrude, click that face, and then extrude it all the way up. There we go. And I'm going to change the operation mode to intersect, like I said. And you can see in the preview, it's got these curved ribs now. So I'll click OK. And there we go, it's created all these new bodies. So I'm going to hide all those just for now. And bring up the dupl duplicate of um, that first one that we made. And I'm going to do the same sort of thing. I'll show that sketch again and click extrude and bring it all the way up. But this time I'm going to keep the mode at cut. So we've got um, sort of a positive and a negative version here. So click OK. And there we go. So now we've got, these will be our infill segments, and those other parts will be our solid ribs. So, I'm going to move these to a new component, actually, just to make them a bit easier to control, so they're all separated. So I'll click ex Assemble, New Component, uh, Empty Component, there we go. Click OK. And now I'm just going to select all these bodies. 
and drag and drop them into that new component that I made, just like that. All right, and you can see right now this little uh, bullet point here. It's just got this component activated. So to activate the rest again, we can click on um, the whole design name up here. Let's see. Activate. There we go. That's it. So we've got one component for all of our infill segments and we've got all of these bodies here which make up our ribs and you can see when we show all of them that fills in the shape of the vase. Just like that. And I want to join the ribs to these top and bottom solid segments. So I can go um, modify, combine, and I'm just going to hide those infill segments. Now I can click one of these and then select all the rest and join them all up. Oops. There we go. And hit OK. Now they're all one body, just that outside section. I'm going to hide that sketch on the bottom. All right, so there we go. There's our solid ribs and solid top and bottom. And here we've got all of these infill segments. So to export it, I can click on this body, right click, save as STL, click OK, and I'll name that ribs. All right, and now I can click on this component and right click on the component and click save as STL, click OK, and then I'll save these as infill. There we go, that's all saved. And now I'm going to bring it all into the slicing software and show you how to slice it. Just one quick note before we do head into the slicer. Um, if you're wanting to make a part like this, which has the gyroid infill showing through on the outside, you're actually going to need to download a different version of the slicing software. And the reason for that is usually um, when infill touches perimeters, the slicer puts in an extra line between them as sort of extra um, contact area between the two. But when you print with no perimeters at all, that just ends up covering up the nice infill pattern that we want to see. So I messaged the developer of the gyroid infill, um, a user named Super Merrill, and asked them to create another version without those interface lines, and they did it. So you can download um, that one in the description. I've put a link down below as well. So here I am in Slicer Proves Edition with the artistic version of the gyroid infill enabled. And the first thing that I'm going to do is actually go to print settings and set the number of perimeters to zero and the number of um, horizontal shells, the top and bottom solid layers, also, also to zero. And go into infill and uh, set the fill pattern to gyroid and the fill density to 20, just like that. And now I can click add and I'm going to bring in the ribs, just like that. And you can see they're loaded in there. And then rather than bringing in the infill part like I just did, I'm going to click on that part and right click and go settings. And then click the load part button here to bring it in. So bring in the infill and there you go. You can see that perfectly fills in the model just like it was in Fusion 360. So now I can set different settings just for the ribs. So we've already got the settings that we want for the infill. We did that in the print settings but I need different settings for the ribs to make them solid and everything. So here I can click on the ribs and then click plus and add in all the settings I want. So I want it to have some perimeters, let's say four, and I want it to have some top and bottom layers as well. So click top solid layers and also bottom solid layers. Let's set both of those to five. And I actually also want those ribs to print with a regular infill pattern. For example, let's say cubic. There we go. So now I've got those ribs printing solid with a cubic infill. So I can close out of that, click OK, and click slice now, and we'll see how it comes out. It's going to take a little while, so I'm just going to speed this up and get through it. So the slicing is all finished now, and you can see here's our finished product. We've got the solid uh, top and bottom and ribs. And in the middle, we've got the beautiful gyroid pattern, which you can see through. So I'll just slide through and have a look. It looks really, really nice. 
there you go. There's the finished fuzz. All done and ready to print. Well, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm really looking forward to seeing what all you guys can do with the gyroid infill pattern. Um, be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I've got a video on strength testing the gyroid pattern coming out soon, so I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.